Mm. Even the five billion, you can't say that the five billion was 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 gained uh, by their own efforts. This is the thing, you know. Maori seem to believe a lot of Maori seem to believe that sitting around living on inherited living on rents on inherited land is the only way to make a living. And if they haven't got land, they can't make a living. And they must find ways to get more and more of the of the terrible white man's money. And they've got to drop that idea. Um, a lot of Maori are much better than that, and they're living very good lives and running successful businesses. The biggest business in the town that I'm sitting in at the moment where I live is owned by a Maori. It's a trucking company. He's doing very well. Um, you know, so it, it's just... It's just um, it's bad for people to think that the only way they can get money is to get it from others, mm. rightly or wrongly. Well, it's got to stop. Joe, do you believe um, that the trust should be able to litigate infinitely against the crown forever and get compensation every single time? Well, I I honestly believe that. We have to get it right the first time and stop giving out um, piddly little amounts of money, like $300,000 for pounds, a Joe. piece of... Li if you let me speak. Well, £300,000 for uh, a landmass the size of England and Wales. If I was to go and take £300,000 over to the UK and say, oh, could I please have uh, England and Wales? They'd laugh at me. And that's, that's ridiculous. You can't buy a big landmass the size of the South Island for that ridiculous amount of money. And if you do feel uncomfortable with um, giving iwi um, money, then just return the land. That's perfectly fine. Iwi will be very comfortable with that. Just It's it said in the Treaty of Waitangi that it would be undisturbed estates. This is the key word here, undisturbed estates, not confiscated. It's undisturbed, but you're not which suggesting the, the that the entire. So, you, but you're not suggesting the entirety of the South South Island and everybody's current property on it should be given back to the ownership of Naitahu. Well, hold on, the um, the statistics that John has got of um, Maori only being two thousand people, of vast inaccuracies. Um, Hobson described um, that when he first came to New Zealand, there wasn't a part of it that was not inhabited. By Māori, and Naitahu had managed to populate, uh, even in Cook's travels, they had all of Banks Peninsula, there were pass sites up there. Even when HMS Resolution was in Fiordland, there was um, Māori living in in, in Fiordland National Park. Well, no one lives there now, but, um, but every single part of the South Island had been colonised by Māori. Now, if the Māori population in the South Island was decimated because of European disease being introduced and introduced, oh. and also uh, from oh. from Māori being excluded from the public health system. Well, how's that the fault of Naitau? You've got to state facts, though, Joe. You see, now, even Steve O'Regan, so-called Tippany for certain circumstances, um, when you argue with him about the two thousand, he says, "No, that's outrageous. There were seven thousand. Okay, 7,000 then. That's not many, is it, for the whole South Island? They weren't using most of it. They were in little family groups. Yes, there were some in Banks Peninsula. There were some um, on Fobo Strait there. Um, they were in little family groups dotted about the place. They didn't use the middle of the island. They didn't go there. They weren't entitled to it. Um, you know, they weren't using it. It's, we've got to talk, you know, we're just coming from, from different moral bases here. And... If we're not coming from truth, it's a bit pointless having a discussion. If Steve O'Regan says there were 7,000, I'm inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt, even though I've also seen that there were 2,000. But it's not many, and it's not worth paying someone for the entire island. Uh, Billy Jackson would have you believe that they should be, rec you know, the real figure should be sort of 70 billion or 30 billion, I think. Today's value. What a bloody cheek. Um, today's value improved by the Pākehā, the evil colonists, largely by the efforts of the people who were not Maori, that's why it's worth 30 billion today. You know, you talk about Auckland. Well, Auckland, uh, of course, is worth a fortune today, uh, but when it was, uh, when Hobson first went there, it was just a bunch of volcanic cones, largely empty because of Maori raids of one sort or another. The South Island was largely empty because of Te Rapraha. Mm. Yeah, so, you know. 
Well, it um, seems it can seems. Come like, from can I can I just um, um, say? I sound. I seem to think of a parallel here. Um, I don't know if you've seen the uh, the film The Social Network about the founder of Facebook, and it wasn't entirely Mark Zuckerberg's own idea. He developed it. He worked it, and he and he made it happen. And he came up with all the programming and everything, but he didn't come up with the idea. And so they paid handsomely uh, the two uh, twin rowers uh, for coming up with the idea, but it wasn't anywhere near what Facebook at the time was worth. Now, if you're just sitting there and you, you happen to be there, let's talk about compensation. Somebody's been wronged. They need to be compensated. I was wronged once when I was in Dunedin. I had five thousand dollars worth of uh, uh, equipment and and uh, and change and stuff uh, stolen uh, from me uh, by a flatmate who skipped out and crossed his name out on the lease. Okay, the police caught him and they awarded me compensation of seventy five dollars. I didn't think that was fair, but I can't go and infinitely prosecute him for doing that to me until I get the full amount back. It's not going to happen. I had to let it go and make what I could from what I had. And I haven't done too bad a job at it. Could that be done? Well, first off, Vinny, am I able to address um, oh, sure. uh, John's assessment on the population of Māori in the South Island? Steve well, O'Regan's assessment, yeah. Well, first off... Tarapraha is probably one of the greatest New Zealanders that has contributed to our national heritage than any other New Zealander because he invented the All Black Haka. And uh. <laughs> this is one of the, the proudest um, ceremonies that the New Zealand All Blacks um, do before they play any game. And... I would say that's one of the reasons why they win a lot of their rugby games, or the majority of them. They're the most, they've won more games than any other professional rugby team. But what 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 John likes to portray Tadapraha as is some um, vicious savage that um, that went on an ethnic cleansing trip around the uh, South Island. When I've actually read about um, Tadapraha, and it's not true at all. He he was actually. Very, um, it was actually very forgiving to his enemies. And when he attacked Parsites down in um, in Canterbury, he uh, would actually get the lieutenants of the um, of the defeated Iwi, and he would he would he would make them his own lieutenants. And Tarapraha was Maldedom's greatest empire builder. He ruled an area from Christchurch all the way up to. Um, Whanganui, with an H, John, that's with an H, yeah. Yeah, pronounced Whanganui, yeah. But what's that got to do with what we were talking about? He still um, ended, he cleansed the South Island, didn't he? I mean, he still, he still, and he still, um, you know, uh, ripped open a pregnant woman and roasted a fetus on a stick. I mean, that's the sort of stuff he was up to. What did he do about the people he captured and took back to Kapiti Island? I think he tortured them by a red hot poker. Look, it's not as though the, the it's not as though um, my culture is is lily white in that area. You know, the hanging, drawing, and quartering of uh, of prisoners and burning of witches. But um, nonetheless, uh, and his son, who was a fine man apparently. Uh, Tamihana, was it? Uh, look, I can't remember. We're, um, Tamihana to Rapraha, I think, went on a, a tour around the South Island also, apologising for the sins of his father. So that gives you an idea of, of, of what he was up to, what Tarapraha was up to. Um, but we were talking about the population of the South Island, and, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't many, was it? At £300,000 was $600,000, multiplied by whatever the uh, inflation was between 1944 and now, was quite a lot of money. And the point is, really, that they accepted it. But, being basically dishonest, they came back for more years later because they could get it. I'm not saying that they... Well, good luck to them. You know, they, they, were, they were given it. Hmm. Uh, they were given $170 million, which is now $5 billion. And, John, um, John, are you, know, you saying that everybody in the tribe is corrupt and dishonest or just the ones who got the money and, and did all the litigation? Uh, I, I probably went too far. Um... I see a lot of dishonesty among the Maori leaders, so I'm not actually saying that uh, 
They were, they were just opportunists. They, they saw an opportunity and they went for it. They misrepresented the history, the populations and all the rest of it. Um, Maori aren't the only people that do that in court cases. The, the, my real beef is with, the, um, is with the governments that gave it to them. Gentlemen, if I may, I feel that there's a problem in this country and a problem around the entire world. And this problem is scumbaggery. And scumbaggery knows no borders, it knows no race, it knows no colour, it knows no creed. It knows only the desire for power and control. Well, it's incentives. People respond to incentives, don't they? Do you think, Joe, that there might be... I mean, are you even prepared to accept the possibility in, in, in that there might be some scumbaggery going on involved here in the, in the treaty process and some people doing it for their own gain and, and not for the greater good of the people. Mm -hmm.